Well, welcome everybody. I will be speaking about our project we have been working on for the last uh, 30 years called Video in the Villages. Uh, when I started this project, uh, I, I will be showing some slides to give you the context. <coughs> This is a, pro a video project. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, I started an experiment. Uh, I used to, to work uh, with indigenous people in Brazil for a long time before that. And uh, I decided to experiment uh, <coughs> to give uh, to, to give the in indigenous people access to video tools. And uh, this seemed uh, strange at that time. And I was very criticized for that. People were saying, well, you are speeding the contact. And uh, well, I, I knew what I was doing, you know. Uh, I knew that I had already worked for a long time with them. And uh, I was saying, well, uh, the Indians uh, don't want to be in a zoo or in a museum. They, are, uh, they want to live the present time and be part of modernity. So what happened? I, uh, the procedure was that. They invited me to a ceremony, and uh, I start shooting them and showing, shooting and showing. So uh, when they realized they, what, how we produce images, they got very excited. And my camera was an open camera. They had to decide what to shoot. And they, they got so enthusiastic that they went into a catharsis. Starting re, uh, re, reacting, uh, reacting the things they have abandoned, such as the piercing ceremony, the noise and lip piercing ceremony that they have aban they had abandoned for 20 years. But with this excitement, with the possibility of uh, uh, the image. So I, they start the ceremony, they pierced uh, 30 uh, young boys, and uh, I was shooting the first three, I said, no, it's okay. And so they said, no, don't stop, you are going to shoot every one, <laughs> because they all want to see their image on the TV. And so I realized that uh, this, was, this could be really something to stimulate and, uh, these communities to... Uh, well, the, the, the thing is that I, I've shot the ceremony and they watch it, and they seem very disappointed with themselves because their auto-image didn't correspond the, with the image they have seen in the TV. And so they started to criticize themselves. And they invited me to a second ceremony. And this time, it was really perfect. So uh, that was the experiment. And I realized th this was a powerful tool to work with them. So I went to several different, uh, uh, different groups, different cultures with groups. I had been uh, working before on land demarcation and other stuff, and uh, especially uh, in communities with visionary leaders with a cultural resistant discourse. And then they would say, well, that's precisely the tool we need right now. And so uh, for 10 years I did that. and. Uh, uh, after that, I have met in festivals, especially at the Smithsonian in, in New York. Uh, I've met with the Inuit people, with the Aboriginal people, uh, very, a lot of native people from the, what we called at that time the First World. And uh, at that time, they already 
uh, went to cinema schools university in Brazil. Only recently, uh, the youth have access to university. So I realized that uh, uh, we could do more than that. We can give the cameras and train them, not only to record their, their stuff, but to tell stories. And uh, so we started a training program to, to, form, to train uh, uh, indigenous filmmakers. And this was very successful. And uh, of course, the youth that have uh, used to have uh, their, their intention coached by the outside world, they were very excited about handling a, a camera, uh, dealing with a computer. But then, uh, at the moment, to, to, to look for the content for their recordings, they had to speak to the elders. So we realized that this was a, a perfect, you know, to put together the, new, the two generations. The, the, the elders were a little bit forgotten. The youth were uh, attracted by the outside world. But then uh, the young guys and girls would come to the others and ask for stories, traditions. And uh, many times I've seen that uh, the, the young guys very, were very surprised by, the, by the, what the elders would say, and uh, sometimes upset and telling them, wow, you never told me those things. And the other elders would say, you never asked for that. <laughs> so this was, uh, for a certain time, the, the project was more focused on the internal processes, to put the young and the elders together in the filming process. But when we started the, the training, the, the, the workshops, the films that immediately came out of these workshops were fantastic. And any kind of public would uh, see a new look about indigenous on, on indigenous world. And uh, instead of uh, have a look of outsiders that would point, point out the, how different they were, how strange or they, they would, uh, the, the films they have produced would reveal a, a look with such an intimacy. The, the films will, the, the statements will ta be taken in the, their own language and then translated and subtitles. And uh, so uh, a look that would humanize and get as closer to them, instead of exotizing uh, their image and their, their being. So, uh, looking at that, and looking the reaction of the public, we started presenting those films, uh, not only in, in the ethnographic film festivals, uh, we wanted to get out of this ghetto in, uh, to, out of this specific public and go to regular festivals. And the, the films were very, very well accepted. And so we, we realized that, you know, 90% uh, of the Brazilian uh, community knew absolutely nothing about the indigenous people in Brazil. And so uh, this became uh, very important to start a work to raise awareness and uh, knowledge about indigenous, different indigenous people in Brazil. In Brazil, they still uh, speak 180 uh, 
It's finished. <laughs> 180 different languages. Imagine how many cultures we have in Brazil. And so uh, we had a TV show on, on TV, an open public TV, and so on. So uh, that's what we have been doing all these years. Thank you.